Hello, I'm Dan and welcome to the second episode where we build small 3D printed PC. If you didn't check the first video, I'll leave link down below so you can watch it. In short, we built small ITX form factor PC in the first episode and it didn't go well. So when we started to apply both CPU and GPU load, power supply didn't handle it. Motherboard went complete solid, fans didn't spin, it didn't respond to anything, so it was clear that something is wrong. We were figuring out what is going on there, so we checked CPU, we checked GPU, and by the end of the day we figured out it was the power supply. Turns out 250 watts isn't enough for the build we did, and we fixed that. And in this video I'm going to show how we did that. Here we have our red nest of wires, which is actually our computer. So let me try to turn it on. It seems to be starting. It should boot into Windows. So what we found is that this power supply is not powerful enough to handle this machine. And now I'm going to show exactly how it behaves. So we got into Windows. Now we can open up Formark. Forty four fourteen forty P and bench the thing. If the power supply will be overloaded, we will shut down completely. Sometimes it passes, sometimes it doesn't, so let's see how it goes. I'm just making it for video, so let's wait for the result. And now it goes completely down, like no power from the power supply at all. It just turned off. To solve our issue, we needed to squeeze more power into an existing PC. Unfortunately, it's not big enough to fit an SFI power supply, so I decided to switch to DC power instead. At the start of the power chain, we have the C socket, something found in any modern home or office. A PC's power supply unit, PSU, is usually connected directly to that socket and converts a C power into DC power. Depending on its certification, it does so with a specific efficiency. Inside the PC, several devices draw power from the PSU. Motherboards distribute power to its components and convert the 12 volt rail down to about 1.2 volts for the CPU. GPU draws 12 volts directly from the PSU through PCI Express cables. HDD and SSD peripherals consume 5 volts and 12 volts applied via SATA connectors and more stuff if they're connected. To supply more power to our system, we can use a DC to DC power supply. They come in many different form factors like this, 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 or the one I used. The downside of these units is that they don't include an AC to DC converter, so you can plug them straight into the wall. Similar to a laptop, you will need an external power brick. You know the type, like this, this, or our beefy 330 watt Dell brick. Returning to the diagram, the chain now looks like this. AC socket, power brick, DC to DC power supply, and PC components as before. In our tests, the system drew 275 watts under full load, so we choose a 330 watt brick for some headroom. Next, we can swap the old gallium nitride power supply for the new DC to DC unit and complete the upgrade. The power brick we are using requires a different power connector. Fortunately, one came with the power supply. Because it is smaller than the previous unit, I 3D printed a few parts, swapped the screws, and it fit right in. Next, we had to test whether it actually worked. We laid all the components out on the table and ran stress tests with games and synthetic benchmarks. The system performed like a champ, power draw hovered around 275 watts, and after a few days of gaming it stayed completely stable. Then I pushed it farther by plugging in a discharged gamepad, a discharged tablet, and a half-charged phone. 
power consumption rose to about 305 watts, yet the system remained rock solid, no crashes at all. We even played for a few hours while those devices were charging. So it is safe to say the power supply upgrade was a success. All that's left is to reassemble the PC. And I won't cover the full assembly here that was shown in the first episode. I'll just leave a sped up video. And we finally have it! A complete build, it's working, yes, we cheated a little bit. And maybe not a little bit, this power brick is ginormous. It is Dell power supply, it is 330 watts, when we consume 270 with some spikes up, up to 280, so this one holds pretty good, it doesn't heat up, of course it doesn't, it's so huge. and kind of fits the build overall, has very thick wiring for DC power, pretty good wire for AC power as well, and just makes this build complete. If I knew the power consumption of these parts at the beginning, I wouldn't select 250 watt power supply for it. But unfortunately, these uh, engineering sample CPUs and motherboards, they don't have a lot of documentation for them. So, I just hoped that 250 watt would be enough, it wasn't, and I switched to something else. Yes, it's cheating, yes, we'll have a huge power brick behind the PC or behind the monitor, but still, we kept the design, and I think external power supply is something interesting to watch about, and that's why I decided to go for it. That's why I decided to purchase the PCB for it and the power supply itself. And continuing the theme about changing things if I knew power consumption at the beginning, I want to say that this build could probably be even smaller because we still have some room where we keep our wiring, we still have some room that was used initially for bigger power supply, now we have DC power supply and it's much smaller, so I think it can be better. I don't think that we will ever see the second iteration of this one because I need to actually give this thing to my friend who is waiting for it like a month already. But other than that, if somebody will be very interested in such a build, I can make even smaller version. I will probably share 3D printable files as well on Bamboo Lab website, how is it called, Maker World or something like that. Um, I cannot leave link for the PC part picker because obviously we have Frankenstein motherboard inside and there is no uh, links for it online. And another thing about this PC is the GPU. I had 4060 in hand and just used that, but I believe that 4070 can fit here. So. This one even has some small path for an upgrade, I'm not sure about the power supply, but in terms of size, I'm pretty confident that it's possible to fit 4070 here. I'm satisfied with this build. It looks good. It looks better than required for a YouTube video. I'll try to leave some close shots so surface finish will be visible. It doesn't have 3D printing artifacts like layer lines, it doesn't have layer shifts, it doesn't have delamination, doesn't have like bulges anywhere. It does have some rough edges where I was cutting opening for IO shield, but other than that, it looks complete and industrial, so I am pretty pleased with it. And now it is time to talk about prices, and they are pretty good. This is 603 bucks gaming PC, and 
I don't remember last time when I saw sub thousand box gaming PC capable of something. Uh, and yeah, let's let's talk a little bit more in detail. So GPU was was two fifty box. It is slightly lower than the market right now for the forty sixty. I suspect the seller was slightly shady, maybe the GPU was slightly used, I'm not sure, but it did pass all the tests, it did pass gaming tests, so it's good. Then we have motherboard, it is 82 bucks, the, the processor, that's crazy. It is very hard to find an ITX motherboard for this amount of money just the motherboard and this one has the processor on it yes it is engineering sample but it works so 82 bucks power supply external brick 23 bucks um, power supply internal dc converter 32 bucks ssd 56 dollars i don't think that we cut prices here it seems reasonable and RAM 55 bucks so that's pretty good and I think it is something worth to consider if you are on a tight budget one small addition I don't recommend this motherboard for beginners or for builds that need to be rock solid it uses an engineering sample CPU, so you can expect occasional crashes, no BIOS updates and potential security gaps. It really is a tinker board. For reliable systems, stick with a mainstream platform such as AM4, AM5 or LGA 1700. Looks like it is time to finish the video. This is the second and I hope the final episode for this 3D printed PC. I really like spending time on it, to be honest, even though it's enormous, it's like 200 hours to print everything, iterative, to draw everything, fit together, that's crazy amount of work. But I enjoyed it, it's pretty cool, it was something to challenge myself and to show what I can do with a 3D printer and small parts on a tight budget. And I hope that it was interesting to watch and I want to ask you to click like button, subscribe on the channel and check different videos if you like them. Thank you for watching.